Uh, okay, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, this is a, a talk about the FailMap project, uh, Faalkaart in Dutch. Um, uh, and it asks me for my Spacenet account again and again and again. So, um, and that is a map that shows uh, the state of security of organizations. In this, 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 uh, uh, this map shows uh, municipalities in the Netherlands, and it shows the the most basic, simple uh, 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 kindergarten level of securing your infrastructure, and you see how well they are doing it not too not too well um, what do we check on uh, with this map you see uh, TLS and you see basic server headers such as um, uh, HSTS that it forces a secure uh, 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 a connection to the website and a few others and there's really when we started uh, in September last year uh, this was the result of our first scan, so it sucks. Um, this project started two years ago. It started at a conference uh, with uh, um, all kinds of uh, uh, people that work at, uh, at, at our security officers uh, that work at municipalities and that they have the job to fix all this stuff. And uh, I was there to uh, I, I I was there as part of a sponsor deal, so I was the guy that was uh, like the sponsor uh, pays a lot of money, so somebody from the company can tell something and look important. I hate those kind of deals because that's usually a muppet that doesn't know anything. So what I did three days in advance, I made a map of the Netherlands which which does exactly this, just to have an impact at the conference, and it worked. Um, that map is really old. You, you can browse in through history, and you see uh, that that we only did TLS checking in the beginning, um, and uh, the map then was also very red. And in one weekend, they fixed 150 TLS issues. So it seemed like a project that would actually have an impact and it would be useful to do. Um, so what we what I did was. Uh, um, request a funding for developing and making sure this project stays alive uh, until the end of time. And uh, those things uh, are really hard. Uh, the first thing is ex it's actually pretty easy. I asked uh, the uh, SIDN funds, the, the Dutch domain register. Um, they have a nice fund for everybody that uh, has a nice project with that increases uh, uh, the, 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 the quality or resilience of the Dutch internet, you can basically ask and they will give you a grant for uh, up to 75,000 euros. So that's a nice lot of money. Uh, I did so too, together uh, with Twan and Ilko, and um, we what got granted 71,000 euros, so we can work on this for at least a year or two. So that's awesome. And we have stickers and uh, uh, this nice nice banner and and whatnot uh, because yeah why not uh, today also t-shirts arrived um, which uh, 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 Akita's uh, made Johan made the, those beautiful F and it has a slogan comply or die <laughs> this <laughs> okay, <laughs> we take orders uh, after the show. <laughs> um, uh, and the funny uh, story is that uh, once we started to roll out uh, this version of uh, FailMap in last September with, with updates, um, it, uh, it got a lot of response. So um, if the mouse is still in the sort of correct position, I should be able to <laughs> sh sh show the map over time. Of course, it doesn't wor work because it's a demo. La 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 demo. Let me fix that. Go 
come on. Okay. It should work now. Now you see the end result instantly. Yeah, okay. So we rolled out in September last year after a lot of work, uh, which I'm gonna show you. And uh, uh, municipalities started working again and started fixing things. Um, so you see, uh, it, it sort of gets better and more green and more orange. So that's a good thing, right? They wouldn't have done this otherwise. So that, th this, is, uh, this is something, it moves. Uh, it actually, uh, whilst uh, a lot is still red, uh, about 2,000 vulnerabilities got fixed in the past months because of this project, which is nice. Um, uh, there are also, yeah, there are some things that we cannot check uh, automatically and there are some bugs and there's also municipalities that think they have fixed something but they didn't and therefore they don't want to do anything until we have investigated the issue. Uh, that, that costs a lot of time. So um, it might be a little bit more green-ish, -er, but uh, well, it still sucks. But we're working on it and it, uh, it, it, it does make an impact so I'm happy with that and we are all happy with that. Um, so the uh, comply or die story is that uh, municipalities started crying like, oh, uh, uh, you, you are far too strict and you enforce security like uh, we, we have to do it. And we are like, uh, and they said like, uh, comply or die is not the way you should be doing this. So we adopted comply or die as a slogan. <laughs> Our WhatsApp, and now we have nice t-shirts with comply or die. Uh, our WhatsApp group also has the title Comply or Die. This, 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 this is funny. So the, the harder the outcry, the more outcry, the more fun we have, basically. Um, um, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to sit down now uh, and show you what, uh, what we did over time and what, uh, what we have to do in the uh, next few months to make sure this project uh, stays relevant. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Um, uh, first off, it's very hard to discover how many domains there are. Um, there are several tricks to find subdomains. So, for example, if you look at Amsterdam, they have like uh, uh, 250 domains or something like this. Uh, there's not even, there's no, no number, but they have about 700 vulnerabilities and on these 250 domains. So how do you find all these domains? And there are several tricks for this. Uh, the first, uh, first one is that we look in the certificate transparency report. All the um, uh, big vendors that uh, Give, uh, or th that you pay for certificates uh, or to have TLS certificates, they publish domains. So y they publish a lot of subdomains of municipalities and we just scrape them and add them to the list and then they will be scanned automatically. Um, another way to find subdomains oh, let me is to um, search on the internet. So we have automated uh, a script that searches Google and Bing and uh, some other less relevant search engines to find uh, subdomains. Um, Lesser relevant than Bing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> less relevant than Bing, yes. <laughs> I don't know what they are anymore. <laughs> uh, um, uh, what we also do is um, uh, there's uh, something called DNSSEC. Uh, and that is a technology that is supposed to guarantee that if you type in uh, filecard.nl <laughs> that it actually resolves to us and not to somebody else. Um, and this technology has some features. One of them is that you can see, uh, I think 
the explanation was the room between the, the domains, the, the empty space between uh, subdomains that are registered or something like that. I don't know because somebody automated, uh, automated it already. So you basically asked what are the subdomains of, of uh, Amsterdam and it gives you the entire list of all subdomains of Amsterdam. Really awesome. There's also, um, uh, it works really well. Um, there's also uh, another version of DNSSEC that has NSEC3 hashes of, 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 of either this empty space or the subdomain name. And um, those need to be correct. They are, they are semi public because you don't want you have your you don't want you have your public infrastructure that you have on the internet known to the rest of the world right so you have to make it somehow secret and hidden luckily those can be uh, cracked and uh, through a work list which we might have because we have a few thousand subdomains here and every organization uses one or, or, or it, the whole set of subdomains are usually the same such as portal or remote or whatever, so that's easy to brute force and otherwise you can just brute force using these standard brute force uh, uh, tricks. Um, another way to get subdomains is via the email. Um, there are municipalities that say, hey, we have got this service, please add it to the map. Uh, yay, that's really cool. Um, we don't run our own uh, DNS server yet. Maybe that might be interesting, but uh, I, I don't know how much work is involved. We never checked. Um, so this is just just the the, the front end, and uh, it started out with a very raunchy PHP script, uh, one one PHP script and a, a database, uh, MySQL database, and this is something much more robust, uh, even. Uh, uh, and let me show you what what uh, what what infrastructure we have. Uh, for example, this uh, interface, uh, there's a nice admin interface behind this that's written in uh, Django. Um, and this is how the, uh, what the, what the ad admin interface looks like. And you see a lot of things. Uh, we've got a feature to uh, do some caching optimization. <laughs> And this is like if you worked all day and changed ratings and and all kinds of other stuff by hand, you just hit the button and it uh, updates uh, the map uh, with all your all the work you did. Um, uh, <laughs> y y there's a there's insight in how much workers we have. We have got a, a couple of workers, so every time we scan, there there's like eight thousand <coughs> domains we scan every day. And those are distributed to workers somewhere. And you can see here the workers, and you can see how many tasks are queued for them. So one uh, worker is only doing the Qualys TLS scan. Uh, Qualys provides a service that, that is of very high quality to, to tell about what is this, the, 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 uh, how good your TLS is. Uh, uh, but the problem is that it's rate limited. We can only have one query per minute, so it's very slow. And using this this this, this architecture, we might have in the future more workers on more machines, so we can uh, do a lot more uh, uh, at the same time. Um, you see um, things that you m might expect here, such as uh, organizations. Um, you, you see uh, what URLs they have, just like on the on the map, and you can edit them uh, the way uh, you like. You have some GeoJSON uh, uh, structure that shows what the uh, shape should be on the map. Um, in the future ver version, uh, you have GeoJSON structures over time, which is awesome because the Netherlands constantly changes and every year there's the villages move from one municipality to the other some municipalities disappear um, so that's uh, uh, something that we are trying to automate away using open street maps um, and here you see the ratings over time and these are these this is the beautiful button with the pink shiny unicorns blah 
that, uh, that builds this uh, thing over time. Um, so we've also got a thing called promises. When an organization says, we are going to fix this for sure, then we can add a promise here. We wanted to call it lies, but that's not very friendly. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, here you can add a promise and uh, tell something about, oh, they're really, really going to fix something at a certain point. And the promise appears on the website at that moment in time. Um, uh, there's a, a lot of URLs, of course. Um, and that's not, not really interesting, uh, but you can say, oh, here, uh, for this URL, I want to uh, perform a certain scan uh, if you want to do this manually. Of course, this happens every day automatically. Um, and then um, we've got a few scanners. And we currently have six different scanners, one for TLS, a few for uh, server headers, and one for... Um, I'm forgetting uh, screenshots. Just make screenshots of websites because um, if you look at this uh, this this thing, there's even more. There's also nice statistics. Maybe I've, I should have shown this before. And you see here that the the amount of uh, organizations that are doing well are, uh, is increasing. Um, you see statistics over time. You see uh, uh, especially the uh, 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 m the domains that ha don't have any encryption at all is still uh, still uh, that's still 256. So and when we started out, it was two uh, was about 300. So they can do better. Uh, but you see, things are getting lower slowly. Um, you see statistics over what are the organizations that have the most problems and usually also have the most subdomains uh, and that have the most subdomains but uh, and domains and that ho don't have any problems at all so it's just flissing it um, you can also see what uh, changes have been made uh, in the uh, in the statistics so you see only the changes we, we do a lot of scans but uh, yeah it, it it makes sense to only show changes and you see that in TLS nothing really changes this is TLS updates uh, lastly there are nice reports and uh, here you can see uh, what's wrong you could do a second opinion you can look uh, up at Wikipedia what you're doing wrong how you should fix it and uh, for Amsterdam this list just goes on and on and on and on it's like your your 200 page report if you want to print it so and some 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 information about the project how it works um so that's that's the software that we have running um but there's but wait there's some more um so here you can see uh we, we find endpoints of a url so if you have uh, hackerhotel.nl we expect that there are usually four endpoints. There's uh, one endpoint. There's two endpoints of I on IPv4, two endpoints <laughs> on IPv6, and uh, one of the endpoints goes to uh, port 80. One of to port 443, the secure one, and the one on port 80 re redirects to the secure one. That's the that's how it should work. I don't know if that makes any sense, but <laughs> to you, but. Uh, uh, Every every port that's open on an IP version is an endpoint, and that's what we find here. And we 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 check also some other ports just to uh, uh, see if there are any any other interesting things, such as uh, port eighty eighty. It sometimes has nice services that are not secured at all. Um, and uh, what, uh, what we also store is then all the scans over time. So here are the TLS scans. And you can see that um, if we sort it on scan moment. So this is from March 2016 to today. 
uh, it only stores changes again because otherwise we would have massive amounts of data and that would not be work we couldn't work with this so we only store changes and here this is the same as you see on the website so only the this this rating b gets translated to something fancy with a nice message and such uh, so that's the admin interface uh, then we have um let me uh check this on Uh, one moment. <coughs> oh, cool. Um, we have, uh, what, what should I do now? <coughs> We've got Grafana, uh, to check, uh, all the, uh, no, this is, no, no, it's not a certificate error. It's asking for my certificate. Um, so if you join the, the, the group and you want to develop something, you get a certificate and you can just uh, log in here. And here, this is something that might take a while because it's a lot of information. Yeah, the, the tasks one is quicker. The what? Tasks. Come up. <coughs> I'm already too late. It's it's. We'll close it, we open it again. <laughs> That's why I created a task dashboard. It's gone. So, so you see uh, all the tasks that are running. Uh, where is it? Uh, at the top one, and then tasks. There we go. A little less fancy, but uh, maybe expand the time to uh, two days. You see that we are running all kinds of tasks that are performing scans. And w you see that there's a lot of room to do even more. So um, uh, expansion to other countries and other branches of government or any other uh, organization that processes privacy sensitive information might be, uh, might be uh, uh, relevant. Um, we also have uh, uh, a GitLab repo. So all, all, everything that we do, all code, is all public. And we try to make it as easy as possible to join and as easy as possible to clone your own uh, project. Um, so if you go to, uh, there, there's uh, some repos, repo, repositories, but this is the one that we do most uh, work, on, work on. This is the website itself. Um, of course, I just, I forgot to add the readme here. But here it says how to, uh, it should be on the front page, but here it says if you do these, if you clone the project, uh, uh, run there and docs and then film it, you have your own implementation with data that you saw on, uh, on the website. Only the data is a few months old. So you've got the exact same thing running, which is pretty nice, given that there are a lot of uh, dependencies that, uh, are added or, or that are that use that make up this software. Um, uh, we have got a lot, a lot of other uh, 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 repositories as well. Uh, uh, what is uh, uh, here? We, we store all the certificates that we uh, we hand out, so that's also public. Uh, of course, it's encrypted, but yeah. Um, all the websites we have, we also have a, a nice website uh, that shows, uh, the st it's a static website about the project, which has the uh, same quick start. And we have a development block, but I just found out it doesn't work anymore, so I have to <laughs> find out why. <laughs> because it should be a static website and it says uh, something about the infrastructure and what we did in the project the last last few months um, and we have a, a static website about the foundation because this project is run by the internet cleanup foundation and uh, it's it's just uh, a, a nice website that shows 
uh, what we do in the mission and, and etc. Um, so, did I cover everything? Oh yeah. Um, so if something goes wrong here, on uh, for so for example, somebody visits the web visits the website and it crashes, the JavaScript errors, or something goes wrong in the back end in, or in one of the tasks, uh, every of these errors are go are visible in uh, Sentry. <laughs> So <laughs> we we got fans in the house. <laughs> so th this is this is a really nice uh, tool um, because it uh, removes the uh, the invisibility cloak when you deploy something. And um, here you can see all the issues that we also have resolved. For example, this one uh, there was a SQL error somewhere on some tasks. Yeah, good luck finding that one with Sentry. That's really easy. Um, because here it, it is really convoluted interface that that makes sense if you look at it for a few minutes you see the actual you can see the actual query that's being run and you can see that's the, where it where it's wrong and you see that it goes wrong because of the empty in statement so okay then we fix this and then uh, uh, you, what, what we do is then we, uh, uh, if we want to develop something, uh, we just check out, the, do, the, do, the, do the checkout, just change the code, and then a lot of uh, quality tools are run, so to enforce that the, the right syntax is used and that you use the right, uh, uh, that you have to, uh, don't use weird uh, uh, or uh, don't have unused dependencies and such. And those are, uh, if you do that correctly, then you can merge it into the, uh, the, ma the master branch and then it uh, gets deployed on the server with one command. It's really, really nice. Uh, so I don't have a demo for this, so, but it's really, it's really easy to get your uh, stuff live. And I can show that show too. The pipeline in the yeah. So if you... Uh, For the film back project, <coughs> so if you check something in, uh, a lot of a lot of stuff happens. Let's do this one. So uh, the syntax is being checked. The data set you add are, uh, is being checked uh, against um, uh, SQLite, MySQL, and Postgres. Um, an integration test is run. Uh, the unit <coughs> tests are run. Uh, and these two, two I don't know. They, they test the same uh, unit tests, but then against the different database implementations. So if there's a discrepancy in the database, then we between versions that we detected with this, that we detected with this, uh, these tests. Okay. The same with the data sets. If you have like a, a data set and uh, it, it's not compatible with MySQL or something like that, um, we will know it. Uh, well, then the software gets built, it gets placed into a staging environment, and there, and from there, you can say, I want to have this live or not. Uh, so we can <coughs> look at one of these things, such as the syntax check, and you see that it runs. Uh, on uh, what's it called again? Uh, I forget it all the time. Or was that the backup? The was it the the, the CI environment, the CR two? Uh, Pylint, no? No. The other. Oh, uh, Palama. No, the other. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, doesn't doesn't sorry. matter. But you, you can see it happens. Uh, uh, all that stuff happens automatically once you check in. And there's uh, if you comply to those all those rules and everything works, then you can deploy and see if it actually works, and uh, be fairly sure sure that it's okay. And uh, well, go to live. So we, you can have something live within like ten minutes. That that's really nice. Um, with having some reasonable assurance that it still works. Uh, but if it doesn't work, which sometimes happens, the front end doesn't 
die. So um, if you look at uh, the, the uptime of this website, <coughs> it's 100% uh, it's up in the last uh, 30 days. And that's because, oh, ooh, that's very good. So because uh, there's several layers of caching uh, that uh, make sure this website just stays live until you really are sure that it actually works. So, and then you can force and clean the cache and then work. Because the, the website is like reasonably fast over, uh, over 4G. So a lot of time was spent to, to make sure that's happening. So um, that's about, that's everything about uh, the infra. If you, um, we're looking for uh, a few things uh, in this project uh, because we want to um, make sure that everything is tested <laughs> that, at, at least everything is tested that the municipalities and government wants to have tested. So uh, we're currently missing a DNSSEC scanner. We want to uh, show if the municipality uses DNSSEC or not. Uh, it's a requirement by the Dutch government, so if they don't, then they uh, I don't know, they, they don't get fined for it, they don't get anything, they don't get in trouble for it, I think. So uh, that might change over time. And also, uh, we don't have a scanner yet for SPF, DKIM, and DMARC, all the email validation stuff. Um, so we're looking for people that would like to write a scanner in Python and that uh, uh, scans for these things, if they exist or not. Um, one thing that uh, is not mandatory, but I think it's easier and funnier, is to check if there are uh, Telnet and FTP uh, uh, services available on all those domains. RDP. Or, and RDP. Uh, at least everything that's not encrypted, and to test if there's, that it's not encrypted without logging in, because then uh, you're doing something that you can, can get a criminal record for. So if you uh, scan for Telnet services, then it's instantly red. So maybe then the map is red, more red again. That's, uh, we hope to make the map more red. Question? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe it's a good idea to um, just feed the IP address to show them. The problem with Shodan is that it's not legal in the Netherlands. We cannot show the Shodan results on this website. Okay. Or have that as a second opinion because it uh, uh, does more than just uh, showing what services are available. So if we show go to Shodan, we might aid in helping. Uh, uh, or the, the, the goal is to make municipalities sh safer in a meaningful way, not to tell you have to run these commands to exploit the services that are running here. So that's, that's, uh, that's why we cannot do that. Um, so th those scanners, that those we really would like to have. And there's also some non-technical things, like we would like to make sure this uh, software is uh, rolled out in other countries as well. And we first thought Germany would be a nice country to rule this out. There's a lot of German <laughs> hackers. But the German government is such a chaotic, bureaucratic mess that it's really hard to understand where they do anything at all. So um, after one day, we just, no, we're not, someone else might, might do uh, it. Yeah, ju just a question about the scanners. Are you scanning for, you said scanning for, for email records in ENS, but are you scanning for, uh, TLS at uh, SMTP port or something like that? Is that in the, the plan? And uh, is it any useful? I, I, I don't know. Um, it's not in the plan right now. Uh, we do want to check if mail servers are running TLS. They should. Yes. Um, uh, but there's a lot of discussion about how to correctly check for this, uh, especially as they than to say that email doesn't need to be, uh, it's not really important that email is encrypted, it's more important that email gets delivered. So, so even if we say that the Dutch government doesn't force it yet, 
we can we can of course add it to the map because we do want to have that enforced uh, it might lead to a lot of loss of email for a short time uh, if they fix it so yeah why not if, if they have a valid certificate it's not a loss of email uh, no but the other <laughs> side also has to talk TLS and there's the problem uh, yeah that 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 one checking is very difficult I think it's uh, not mandatory for a mail server to, to only speak TLS. So you, uh, I, I think if at least a mail server is offering TLS to the client, that's already better than not having TLS at all or forcing TLS on all uh, mail. You should at least have the possibility to securely deliver an email. And it should maybe not enforce. I don't know what the Dutch laws are, are on it, but no, uh, you, you can configure TLS server to, to accept bo both kinds of traffics on the same port. Uh, so you don't lose email, but you offer security to, to those who, who want it. So yeah, but basically what, what we can add and what is relatively simple is to scan for all ports that are non, not, in, no, that are not, that are not encrypted. That's, that's doable. Uh, but then you get other challenges. If you make a port scanner, there are some uh, municipalities that have uh, tools that show random open ports and such so you have to do this in a little bit smarter way so if we scan things we scan them in a random order um, and we tend to spread out uh, scans over time you saw that it was not the case but we did do that um, so not to flood municipalities with a lot of data at, 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 at a short time um, but that's that's one part the technical part is something that we really need help with and the other part is to roll it out in other countries. Uh, we are thinking about France because it also has a similar structure of government as the Netherlands. It's easier. Um, uh, also helping talking with other privacy-minded organizations, uh, uh, presenting at conferences. Uh, if you're better at presenting at conferences than me, then please do. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, that's the main part for this project is now uh, making sure this stays alive in a year or two or four or ten so that that's what we're doing right now um, so if you want to join uh, you've seen the GitLab uh, repository you can just clone it and uh, 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 request uh, access to uh, or do a pull request and uh, uh, your code can be merged um, you can also get a certificate so you can view actually the stats and the admin interface and, 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 and whatnot. Uh, you can uh, then join the WhatsApp group. We have a small WhatsApp group with the team that uh, we show all the things that we cannot show. Uh, something I cannot show, for example, is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, tickets, uh, the contents of the tickets. So we get a lot of, uh, there's a nice service desk in GitLab. And here you see that uh, there are, e are emails like, uh, you have to uh, recheck this and recheck this and recheck this. And some of these emails are really long and really, uh, yeah, th that's, why the, that's where the comply or die thing com comes from. Uh, but some, most of them are really, uh, really okay. And they just explain if we look at this surface and we do this and do this then uh, uh, then it's okay so uh, sometimes they do deliver us bugs that we have to fix sometimes they say uh, you have to fix it because we say so uh, we don't <laughs> of course um, yeah th and that's that's basically it um, okay. Let's see what's what's happening here. Blah blah blah. Well, there's a lot of these emails, so that's a lot of work to just check what what they're on about and uh, if it, if this is correct or not. Maybe we should just open up this whole thing to so so everybody can see what's being submitted <laughs> to the project. Saves a lot of time. Everybody can respond. Yeah, so everybody can respond. <laughs> uh, usually these are confidential. 
So, uh, but there's not really any any personal or, or privacy sensitive information in. So, so it's not it's not 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 um, it's not anymore. <laughs> Yeah. So if you want to, yeah, there's a question over there. Very nice uh, project. Um, so about the contact with the uh, governmental organizations, uh, apart from these emails you get, do you have also uh, instant contact? Do you uh, lay contact with them? Or, yes. Uh, uh, we currently are trying to set a meeting with the, uh, there, there's this organization that does security stuff for municipalities. It's called the IBD, Informatie Beveiligingsdienst. And they, uh, they said in a mail that they have an opinion on the way we scan. So that's good. It's, it's good. I don't. I don't know what opinion they have, but they have one. They and they were explicit about having an opinion. So that's interesting. Um, and we're trying to set up a meeting to talk uh, uh, on um, what we should scan more, we, because we obviously should scan more. We don't comply with the Dutch baseline. So that's that's one thing. They're completely right right about that. And also to uh, work with them to maybe that they can do part of the uh, 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 the, the service desk. So just to have the calls handled. <laughs> Only the danger is that uh, if there's somebody that doesn't have the technical know-how, that they might incorrectly change things. And that's that's the that's that's the scary part doing the, doing this. Somebody from a municipality is actually working with the project. So that helps a lot with discovering subdomains because uh, they just added a lot of words to the, to, the, to the list. And then we found a lot of more subdomains. That's really funny. Um, but still, um, yes, we do work with those, those parties to see. Maybe the Dutch government wants to have this in their portfolio. I don't think it's stupid to do so. I think it's very wise to do so. Yep. Um, because the only government in the world that's currently doing something like this is the American government, strangely enough. So um, and we're also talking to them and maybe that they want to uh, incorporate the features such as uh, there's history in this map. It's uh, because it's a map, it's very easy to see what the status is using colors. And maybe they want to add that to their uh, stuff as well. So yes, absolutely, we talk with them. Yeah. So, so one other question about the uh, scanners. You s uh, told us that you were looking for another uh, a bunch of scanners, for example, email. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you also working with, with online scanners? Uh, because, yes. for example, for email, you have a pretty good online scanners. You can use them, I think, also with an API. Uh, yeah, even without an API, of course. Uh, we do use the uh, CMS scan, which, uh, which is very popular. Oh yes, I know. Yeah. This one is very, yeah. very popular. Yeah. Uh, hello. Two mics. Oh, oh, the other. Okay. 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 So, uh, yeah, this is a very popular service. Um, uh, we are using their API. One request a minute. Except if you have multiple servers, then you can do it faster, or they allow to. Uh, to, to give you a special contract. We'd rather not have a special contract because we want everybody to use the software without any, uh, uh, within five minutes. So, uh, but we use this because they update it. It's very well documented. Yeah, so, very yeah. extensive, yeah. All right, any other question? Yes. Yeah. Yes. In most cases, uh, each municipality runs their own infra, mm -hmm. and what they're doing uh, in terms of cost saving is that they're merging. So not only are the uh, uh, every year uh, municipalities merge, that's 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 a fact, and uh, we might end up over time with just thirty of them or something. This 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 huge red thing used to be four something. Uh, they merge. But also the ICT services and what whatnot, they also merge behind the scenes. And what we don't have yet is there's a lot of uh, uh, they call samenwerkingsverbanden. So uh, yeah, uh, they work together, 
and they have a special subdomain or special website for that. And that also needs to be added to this map, of course. Exactly, exactly, shared server centers. Uh, of course, we have support for uh, sharing a domain across multiple organizations, that makes sense. So, yes, there's a lot of overhead. <laughs> and yes, it's a lot of people that need to be trained. And they don't automate everything, they should. So, any other questions? Mentioned, do you want to uh, start scanning for email, um, DNS records, mm -hmm. uh, telnet, things like that? Why scan yourself? Can't you use public uh, repositories from a ZMAP project, for example? Um, why do we scan ourselves? Uh, it has a few reasons. One is that we don't know how frequent they update. We know that we, c we want to update ev at least every day. Um, also, uh, best case, uh, we want to make sure this project stands on its own, so you can clone it and make sure that it just works, instead of, uh, oh no, uh, Qualys doesn't work anymore, or they now have a paid subscription. Uh, I'd rather see an open source uh, Qualys scanner that does about the same stuff and has about the same grading than that we're using online services. So, yeah, we, we can. Um, one of the things that uh, bothers me for a while is there's a very good scanner that's uh, internet.nl and they scan for email and such, only um, that's also not open source and I think they should be. So well, ZMAP is, isn't it? It is. A ZMAP is open source, yeah. yes. So we then ZMAP is also a software you can run and download, yeah. So that's something we can easily incorporate, of course. There's a lot of, like, if you look at the list of, of stuff we use to make this website, it's, it's, it's this list. So there's a lot of dependencies to make sure this runs. It, it's sometimes I, I, I'm, I wonder why how it can run at all, but it does for months now and without any issue, so that's fine. Also, if you are an open source project and you want to use Sentry, then you can uh, request a free account. So you're not limited to the, to the demo, like 1,000 issues per month or per day or something like that. You just have like a full account. Yeah, they're, 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 they're very nice. They're really an open source company. Really, really awesome. Yeah, so yeah, we, we basically want to model after them, if that is possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this is the film project. Um, so if you want to join, please uh, step by at the desk. You know where I'm, I'm, I'm sitting next to this banner. Uh, if you want to have a certificate and join, uh, want to make pull requests, please do so. If you want to know anything about the software, uh, where to look, uh, uh, just ask, uh, join the WhatsApp group. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Maybe instead of the WhatsApp group, maybe instead of the WhatsApp group, we should The Slack group, because that's public and people can oh. join without needing to oh, be okay, invited. Okay. We also have a Slack group, so we're migrating from to that today. I, I, I don't know. We can decide this right now. <laughs> and, and <laughs> Okay, and we're migrating during to this Slack. meeting <laughs> action point. We're, we're <laughs> migrating to Slack. We have a Slack group. Uh, if you're migrating to Slack, just migrate to Mattermost. It's integrated to GitLab, and it's open. Oh, oh. Okay. Mattermost is basically the GitLab Slack. Uh, I heard we are migrating to. <laughs> we, we are migrating to Mattermost. Not migrating today. Yeah. We're migrating back to uh, what's it called again? My, uh, Microsoft Messenger. <laughs> yeah, MSN. Comment We're doing chat. MSN. MS Comet chat. ICQ, ICQ, right? ICQ. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's basically a lot of fun and bantering and and just having uh, fun and trolling governments, and that's that's a great time. So you're welcome. Oh yeah, okay, moment. How do you get your list of vulnerabilities, things like the click tracking and cross site uh, uh, the uh, there's a list that the government publishes is called comply or explain. 
and that shows a list of four or five techniques that they must implement. There's also the National Cybersecurity Center that, that used to publish a very extensive list of vulnerabilities that you should be checking for the DVD. And uh, it makes sense to enforce that on everything. Uh, let me search for this HTML file. These are the statistics of our system. Um, it's a bit hard to follow, but we have like 180 visitors. I think this is a day or this is a week? This is a week. So like 130 visitors during the week. You can see that it's really municipalities that are looking because they don't do anything in the weekend. <laughs> you can perfectly see the week. Yeah, yeah, you can see. Yeah, we can see that here. You see always a peak in the morning, and it's it's, it's closed in the in the. Uh, this is without scrolls, by the way, in the kind of stuff. We so we we need to just to scroll down to like the distribution of OS. I don't know if it's still. Operating system, Windows. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and browsers, which is also uh, quite common. <laughs> Internet Explorer. <laughs> and there's the, the time distribution, I believe. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when did he stop working? Is it before or after uh, yeah. 4 o'clock? It's around here. It's 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and it started uh, at 8, so they start really early. That's fine. There's also some really nice uh, referrer URLs, like in internal, you can see all the internal systems they're using. There's a lot of information you get from this. Uh, are you using these uh, referral URLs to find new, new domains? Uh, we, we, we should, we should. We, we didn't have, these are just the bare uh, 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 Nginx logs, which are parsed. There are also certificates that show other subdomains in the certificate, and it's not, uh, another source with, that we should use to extract <laughs> more subdomains. So, yeah. And check IP range around their main IP. Uh, mm. We could just ask Ripe for the entire of that. Uh, but that doesn't really work because um, the, a lot of municipalities also host, they uh, act as a hosting provider. So they host a lot of other stuff for other parties. Mm. Things they sub sub subsidize and whatnot. And uh, if you do that, uh, I've done mm. a short scan on the uh, municipality of Leeuwarden and they <coughs> have, I think, a few million IP addresses. I don't know, but yeah, that doesn't really work. Okay. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I think this. This. Uh, we will decide where we are going to communicate. I guess. Yep. I we will put it on the on the website somewhere. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you can find it there. Uh, uh, do you want to anything else? Well, it's me and Johan. <laughs> That's very small. But uh, you, can, you can see, like, we do a lot, a lot of work. Um, I believe GitHub has also has a punch card. Uh. Yeah, you can see here. Uh, uh, activity. Oh, there's an even fancier one. Yeah, activity. This is just a reference. Or no, or the other one above it. Mm. Oh. Details? No. But I think it's my work. You see, there's a lot of work uh, being done over time. And this is the repository, mm. repository we moved to after we thought we should do many things. And things were getting really slow in GitHub. So we thought, so I'll just clean it and start over. So, and you see already a few hundred commits here. So about every day something happens. Um, so I see it's only two person is wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to meet yeah. through the development stuff, yeah. And basically we subject ourselves to the same uh, requirements that we put on uh, other contributors, basically. So if we want to make a change, we have to do the same procedure. We have to make a pull request and go through all the same testing. And only if it passes, we can continue uh, continue on. So we, we test our own uh, procedures as well. 
So we, we feel the pain. It's not like we are hacking away and other people contribute and have to do all the stuff and then uh, and have to do a lot of work. We have to do the, the same amount of work. So we know how painful our procedures are and we try to optimize them every time. So uh, yesterday I pushed a change where basically the initial setup changed from like 10 commands to a single command and you have a completely running environment with, with a single command without uh, worrying about separate services because it's built up of a lot of uh, yeah, individual components for uh, better deployment and scalability. Uh, but yeah, we brought that into one single um, application for development. So it's really easy to get started and to run your own, uh, yeah, your own instance and to do small fixes really fast. Basically, you could within five minutes you could have you could have it running. Yeah, that's always the goal to have the software running within five minutes without knowledge. That's the uh, that's the challenge. Yeah. So that's because we want to, to have uh, journalists in other countries outside of the EU running this. So, uh, and there are some countries that are not as friendly uh, or that have that have another impact when you release something like this. Uh, because the culture is different, it is it, like you have failed in something, so uh, you will be punished or fired or whatever, and uh, it, it, it matters that uh, uh, that's why we don't deploy outside of Europe, and that uh, parties that know their own country should deploy in, that, in, in other countries such as Japan. Well, for speaking about uh, uh, journalists, I'm, I was thinking about the idea of packaging in, into an, uh, an application. So you can just download like the application as a standalone thing, run it on your desktop, and you have like a film app for your own. Cool. And that should be pretty trivial because it's just Python and one dependency. And if we can package that into uh, into a single blob, and we can just push it, so uh, might be somewhere next week so that you can just double click and yeah, have yeah. film app. So what I'm currently writing is. Uh, uh, municipalities change over time, so the shapes change over time, uh, which is annoying because you have to have the history and select the right point in time, and it has to be a very grand, really fast query, so that's interesting. And um, so the geometry, geometry change and uh, the names of the organizations change over time, but they share the same URLs and history. And I'm currently writing something that you have the uh, that you can slide here and see the, 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 the shapes change and such. Now you can feel just see the colors change. If the shape like changes, then probably the, if the name changes, they get new domains, but the old ones don't go apart. Uh, no, what we uh, we've thought long and hard about this, and you can see the whole reasoning in one of the the code that actually does this. And what we do is we uh, make a new organization, and they just are added to the URLs that are already there. So, because we sh we here show only the, the URLs which are relevant for the organization at that time, and and also uh, the URLs might not exist for a month, and then they start existing again, and that's all being accounted for. <coughs> and that's where some insane complexity that you don't really see here is is actually <coughs> that actually is implemented. Where are people getting their SSL certificates from these days? Is it all that's encrypted, or is it? Uh, um, Stand in needle on the CR. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, do you have your own CI? Yeah. No, Daddy. Okay. Mandatory <laughs> for government <laughs> websites. Right. Okay. I, I, I really don't know. I've never. We don't do any statistics about that. It is. Uh, Start TLS is cheap nowadays. <laughs> it's useless. <laughs> that's uh, why they, it's cheap. They, uh, they changed it somehow, right? Uh, yeah, you need to you need to enable a flag in your Chrome settings, and then you can have the old behavior back. Uh, you need to go to the developer uh, command shift J, security, yeah. and then view certificates. Yeah. Then, like uh, the most recent Chrome, it's uh, it's a flag to enable uh, again. Yeah. So this is just global site. It's not even uh, it's, uh, or if you end up rebranded, I don't know. Uh, we don't do statistics about that. We don't think that adds to privacy. Mm -hmm. Just curious. Yeah. I'm uh, guessing yours is Let's Encrypt. Sorry? I'm guessing yours is from Let's Encrypt. It's yes. Yeah, it is. Oh. Yes. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you.